Hello and welcome to Locked In Stitches and our Rock the Casbah Blocks of the Month collection. Today I'm going to show you how to complete block four and it is a circular design. One of the things that I love about this design as I come in close is you can see the beautiful quilting and we have one style of quilting um, here within the applique area and then another style here along the outside. Um, as always the blocks come in different sizes so you've got five, six, seven, eight and nine inch blocks all included. You also get a block which is just the quilting design in those same sizes and we've got a continuous quilting block in that quilting design for you as well. Okay let's get started. So to begin with what we've got is our cutaway poly mesh stabilizer and a piece of embroiderer's felt. I have my machine threaded with wash away thread and you can see I'm running the first colorway to hold that fabric down and then I'm going to remove the hoop from the machine and trim away the excess embroiderer's felt. What we want is the embroiderer's felt just in the block itself. By doing this now it means that we don't have all that added bulk in our seams later on and it gives the quilt a much better look long term. So we'll come through and trim that and then next we're going to take our 100% cotton fabric. I'm just using homespun which I have starched. Place it over that embroiderer's felt and with the wash away thread again stitch colorway 2 which is going to hold that fabric to the embroiderer's felt and the stabilizer. Now what you're going to see as we get started I actually had a little bit of a problem when I was recording the video for this and although I thought the video was recording perfectly I've missed the first couple of colors so I'm going to talk you through the first couple of colors here. We've got colorway three and four which was the large pink circle and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, 11, and 12 are all of the applique pieces in those diamond corners. We're now coming on to colorway 13 and 14. And what I'm doing here is I am laying a piece of white, of just extra white homespun that I've got on top of the outline there and trimming away the excess before I start in on colorway 15 through or 15 and 16 now which is going to lay down my teal fabric. You'll see that I have made this a little bit faster and between each step I am trimming away my fabric with my curved um, squeeze scissors because they are the most beautiful thing. I'm also pulling the machine forward or the hoop forward meaning that I don't have to remove the hoop from the machine to easily trim the applique. And we'll come through and so this is colorway 17 and 18 to hold all of this down and one of the joys of the curved scissors is just how much they can get into the corners and there are quite a lot of corners in this project it's all small fiddly pieces so next we are at colorway 19 and now 20 
and you'll see that I'm being fairly stingy with my applique fabric and this is one of the reasons that I don't like using something like the scan and cuts or the accu cutters whatever brand you've got they're all the same um, I'm not a huge fan of using these to cut my fabrics because I think I can be a little bit stingier without it if of course you would like to um, you can take the design into your cutter file and turn it into an SVG file and we're on the final colorway of 21 and 22 now as you can see there's a lot of colors or a lot of starting and stopping with the machine but it's all about laying down the fabric so there's not actually a lot of work in the blocks themselves so now that we have all of our fabrics laid down I'm going to change my thread and I'm going to change it to the um, deep pink color and the first thing that we're going to do is go around that outside circle the way all of these blocks have been designed is whoops excuse me while we just get that right um, so all of these blocks have been designed to um, make it as simple and as perfect as stitching as possible so the reason that we do the outside stitching first is so that the inside stitching doesn't then suck the fabric in as we go along now the fabrics that I personally have used here is I have used four shades of fabric initially I had some in a stash that I had purchased about 12 months ago um, and I'm still laughing over the fact that I really really thought I would be able to go back to the shop and buy more of that same fabric that didn't happen for me so I had to go for tones um, so initially I had um, barley fabrics and what I ended up then moving towards was a more marbled style of fabric but I've still used the same tones and I've made sure that I've dispersed the fabric sort of evenly throughout the blocks so that it looks like a cohesive unit and my satin stitch is going now it looks like I'm stitching at a really high speed here um, I'm not I'm stitching at about 500 stitches a minute maybe 600 and I am using an 1175 needle what I've done um, to save you guys all of the boring bits is I have actually just come through and set oops now you get to watch me change my bobbin aren't you lucky and here we go again um, so to save you sitting here watching this stitch for over an hour I speed up certain parts of the stitching while still talking us through it one of the things that I love about the applique designs that I do is that I create a specialty stitch that then runs around the design giving it a really beautiful finish off and you get that on all of these blocks so our pink is nearly finished what we're then going to go for is the wine color and it's just a deep burgundy as you can see there and it's just those color tips so the other thing that's done is of course every color sits on top of the previous so that all of the edges are covered I can understand that you might want to do a color sort 
to save yourselves changing colors I don't recommend doing this um, generally because the color sort is just there for um, for actions next up is colorway 25 which is stitching around those I'm going to call them semicircle style blocks the threads that I've used in this project are polyester threads and that's just because I prefer using polyester it is my thread of choice and we're coming around what you want to make sure before you start a project like this or before you start a block like this you want to make sure that you've got um, at least one extra bobbin case filled um, always handy if you have to stop in the middle to um, to wind a bobbin case it is just a pain in the neck the other thing that I like to do uh, before I get started on a large project is make sure I have enough thread to finish the project I certainly didn't use a full spool of any one color during this entire quilt but I used a fair amount of thread and I was using the larger thousand um, thousand meter spools so I would recommend um, sort of starting off your project with a new spool of thread to match your fabric there is just something about watching a machine stitching out it's just such a soothing thing to see how smoothly and intricately these machines create their designs isn't it I just love watching this one happen okay and we're nearly three quarters of the way through this one here we go when it comes to the fabrics that you use don't feel um, hemmed in by the fact that I've used four fabrics throughout the entire project I actually love the idea of doing this project with a whole lot of scraps so that every block is different and I could see that working with every background being different or just the fabrics that you use to put the blocks together so really do use your imagination and we're on the last round now come through and do the inside part and then we're going to move on to the final decorative colorway and the final decorative colorway that we are using here is for me the dark teal and we are doing a strong fill section of stitching so you can see at the moment we are stitching the underlay on this design and it's important that we have the right underlay here because if we don't the fabric won't be able to support the sheer number of stitches that we are going to be using the way that I've done this stitching is it is a motif fill so the stitching itself has a circle in its detailing just for you know something that little bit extra whilst we're working on this color 
it is worth taking the time to get your um, wadding and your backing fabric together and ready to create your block. We come through, stitching, stitching, stitching. And we're almost done with the main stitching. And there we are finished. Okay, so now we are going to remove the hoop from the machine and I want to thread the machine again with the wash away stabler, oh sorry, wash away thread. I'm going to place my wadding on the back, stitch the colorway 27 and I'm then going to trim away the excess wadding. And again, this is because it stops us from having all of that excess wadding in our seam allowance and gives us a much more beautiful finish. Once I've done that, I pop the, excuse my hand there, once I've done that, I'm going to pop the, um, uh, the quilt backing fabric onto the back of the block and with the wash away thread still in there stitch colorway 28 to secure that backing fabric to the wadding and the rest of the block Okay, now this is a little bit different than most of the blocks. Most of the blocks only have one colour of quilting. This block has three colours. So the first thing that we're going to do is load up the white thread and we are going to stitch the outside of the block with the quilting design. The outside of the block is a... Um, paisley print and I've used that just because I thought it really popped against the beautiful diamonds that we're using on the inside of the block and here we go just so that you can see a little bit better that's our quilting going through all of the layers. You can choose whether you want to quilt with cotton thread or embroidery thread. I've chosen to quilt with polyester embroidery thread just because I think it gives a slightly sexier finish. Totally up to you. I'm then going to change to my medium teal and come through and stitch the echo quilting inside of these blocks. Naturally if your machine does not trim between stitching um, and you are left with jump stitches please trim each jump stitch between color changes. And then the final color of quilting which is color 31 is going to be done in the deep pink and stitched on top of that pink outline. And here we go. Oh, there's always a thread change when you don't want one, isn't there? Or a thread break. So this in a, in a normal world this would be over quilting but I kind of like that about this block because I think it does add interest. As always if you don't want to do the quilting you can stop um, before adding the wadding into your design and then you can just piece your quilt together normally. And here you can see our completed block. I'm loving the way the quilting really highlights that 
Now, the back of the quilt, because we've used coloured thread in that highlighting, you can just start to see the tiniest pull of that colour, but it's really not enough to bother me. And once again, if you did want to do all of the quilting in the white, you are more than welcome to do that. So I hope you've enjoyed this block and we'll see you next month for the next In the Rock the Casbah collection.